Part uh, one bored the hell out. I mean, part uh, one was more boring. It's kind of boring. This one has a little more action, but you got to like a lot of Zendaya But action. a little less uh, Oscar Isaac. You, All right. Let's you know what you do have preview. to think hard about is Dune. You do have to think about Dune. And how many sandworms are too many sandworms. So, uh, at some point, this Damn. is crazy. Oh, my 92 God. 92 and 95. We'll start with the Rotten Tomatoes, just to understand where people sit on this. And then we'll talk about it, because mm. I am an enormous Dune fan, if you did not know. I have read every single Frank Herbert Dune book, including his son's books. But I've read the six core books at least uh, four times each for sure. I've probably read Dune at least seven to eight times. So I am very familiar with the, with Dune. And arguing with people online about Dune in, in this movie has been exhausting. But... Uh, the critics have it at 92% with 396 reviews. That's basically all the professional critics, including us. And the audience score is at 95% with 2,500 reviews. Critic consensus, visual, visually thrilling and narratively epic, Dune Part 2 continues Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of the beloved sci-fi series in spectacular form. Audience says Dune Part 2 is nearly three hours of exceptional sci-fi spectacle that needs to be seen on the biggest screen possible. I agree with both of those things, except their score is a 95. I would give it a B plus, like an 89. You want to give it one more point to get it to a 90? No, because there are some flaws to it. Infinity's here. I am a book purist, but I'm okay with the adaptations because I, I do enjoy... I don't remember the sci-fi f- movie. Like I know it was on on the sci-fi channel and I don't remember that one that well because I didn't really watch it. Cause I just, the, the, the special effects weren't good enough for me to like it. I do very much like the Lynch adaptation. I think Lynch did a very good job with ad- adapting the thing that he could. And it's got a lot of differences from the book, but it's fine. And, and this one is almost slavishly adapting the book, except in part two, the very end, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to get there and we're going to talk about it. And that's where we're not sure where all this goes. Part Uh, one bored the hell out. I mean, part eh, one was more boring. It's kind of boring. This one has a little more action, but you got to like a lot of Zendaya action. But a little less uh, Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac was good. I liked him in it for sure. He Oscar was, Isaac was good. great in it. He was great. Wait, hold on. If you didn't see it, you're going to get this shit spoiled hard. Yeah, we're going to spoil this real hard. Yeah. I mean, you know. Okay, so what I guess we should do is uh, let me go here. Where are we at now? Oh, we're at reviews. I forgot to do that. Oh, my God. But then what we're at is. Um, no music. Us. As I look, I'm going to go to our channel so I can find the comments. What? I have to look at our comments oh, because I don't to. know exactly what they say. So I have to look up our own channel well, and I find mean, out where I, we're at. What, is it can on you which, read them? Which Dune, yeah, I can. Well, which Dune review is it? What you did my, 14. I don't know. Which Dune review is it on? You did 14 different Dunes. Maybe Hey Girl can tell us which exact do- I thought it was the one that said like uh, Dune has a problem? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's the one. Was it all oh, 41 comments? When the f- where am I going to find Look for this? Hey Girl. You'll find them. I can't type in just Hey Girl. No, no. Just go through them and oh, you'll see hers. They should be close to the top. Uh, Jason Momoa, Zendaya, Florence Pugh seem like pretty young people who care more about their looks than conveying emotions. Yes, the movie was sterile. Also, I don't do Twitter. Oh, okay. So she doesn't do Twitter, which <laughs> is... That makes sense. You shouldn't do Twitter. I mean, unless you really like Elon. But even Elon hates Don Lemon. Did you hear that Elon hired Don Lemon? No, oh, really? To do a show and then fired him after the first episode. Austin Butler stole the movie, apparently. 
I would agree with that. Well, I wouldn't say he stole it, but he did a very good job because his version of he caught he's very good at it. apparently he's good at um like dialect and accents because he takes what Stellan Skarsgård does. He does a pretty good job at, at Stellan Skarsgård's. He uh, copies his accent almost. He's like, oh. He talks like his uncle, which is amazing. Which Whereas Dave Bautista is just like, I talk like Dave Bautista. I talk like Dave Bautista. He's like, oh, these, these Fremen are rats. And then you get uh, you, you get Austin, and he's like, sounds like Stellan Sarsgaard. I thought that was awesome. And and I thought the scene that he improvised was fine. Dang. Somebody was complaining about the kiss scene, and I'm like. It was fine. It, it 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 looks like any other Italian mafia thing, right? They, you know, sometimes, you know, he was very excited that his uncle granted him to be the fiefdom of du, of du, of Arrakis, right? So he's like, gives him a kiss back, like whatever. I I didn't think there was there was a whole thing about that. I, I just thought that was ridiculous. So I guess the big issues about Chani, you didn't read the ones about Chani, where she did some Chani things. So the big thing, I guess the big difference is the Chani from the book and the Chani from the movie where, you know how Chani is mad at Timothy Chalamet? Yeah, she's just a whiny baby. But they set her up. So she doesn't like the idea that her religion is being used as a tool against her own people. And she she's like, oh, well, I'm going to free my people my way which it's like sweetheart you you have been doing that hey it's sensibly cynical we're just talking about you being a co-host so we're we're now sure. we got other members that want to be co-hosts so sensibly mm-hmm. i, I know, know you need to start an only fans for your puss and get money to subscribe you get a four twelve dollars a to year feed a lonely yeah a noob noob. hungry noob noob yeah that is that is true that's that's true <clears throat> Yeah, Austin Butler, he's very weird. I, I don't know what his deal is, but so he was plowing Vanessa Hudgens. Was he? Yeah, they used to date for like eight years. He wouldn't marry her. Town. Then they broke up. She was the one who convinced him to do the uh the Elvis role. Really? Yep. I did not know that. Yep. They dated for like seven, eight years. He wouldn't propose. Then they break up, and then he immediately proposed to his other weird girl. I don't know who he's married to, but like you had Vanessa Hudgens. What are you doing, dude? Uh, so I guess uh, Hey Girl's biggest point about Chani is that she was, they used the voice on her and made her do what she didn't want to do. Wait, the the voice is, is used on her in this movie? Yeah, she definitely uses voice on Chani. When? Lady Jessica violated her by using the voice on her. She made her promote the prophecy on some level. When? How come we never make uh, we go from freedom to slavery? Fair enough. That well, there should be more slaves. I mean, technically, there are more slaves now than there were back in uh, the past. So, uh, it says he says he'll he'll lock it in. Well, you got to give him at least one date. You need to lock in the membership sensibly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty rude. <laughs> It is. It is. But we're about the money here at Orcu. <laughs> we since we keep getting demonetized. We are a and financial strike. institution. Yeah, I sensibly hasn't heard about our strike, so we we went into, we were talking about it. So so Chani, which is so the only thing I have a I have a problem with is I think they didn't spend enough time developing the relationship. As in sex. There was not enough sex scenes for sure, and then. You know, she's mad, even though her name is literally part of the uh, prophecy that which is not in the book. None of none of that's in the book where she just gets mad because she feels used and abused by Paul because she's like, Paul, don't go to the south because it's bad, although they can't really not go to the south. So, I I mean, if you didn't watch Dune, you're not going to understand a goddamn word we're saying. Nope. Nope. So you clearly had to see that, but Zenday is very mad because she can't be in the circus. The world's greatest show. Yes. She was also in that. She was also the greatest showman, the greatest showman. So she's mad because she's being, she, she's non-religious, I guess. 
and, and that's the, the one of the biggest problems I have is in the books they never mention there's no such thing as the fundamentalist South. That is not a thing. So there's not like an extremist group of Fremen and a non-extremist group of Fremen. Essentially, all Fremen are just Fremen and they're all essentially Muslims, right? That's kind of what the entire book is about. Muslims? Especially. Oh, you want us to review Civil War? What the hell is Civil War? Uh, that's the one with Jesse. Is Jesse Plemons in it and his wife is in it? Okay. So why did Paul have to marry Irulan? Wasn't it all about political alliances? Yeah, but then they're, they literally get on the phone and they're like, we just, uh, Paul just married Irulan. He just married Florence Pugh and uh, you should all be, accept him as emperor. And they're like, no, unleash the jihad, which is what I have a problem with. Because he didn't have to marry Irulan. He could have just married Chani then. Why did he have to unleash the jihad anyway? The point is, and if you read the books, at the very end, Lady Jessica says, while Irulan may be the empress in name, she will never bear his children, which is the most important part. And it is, there's a mirror, right? Lady Jessica married Duke Leto, and Leto wanted an heir. And the Benny Gesserit said he could only have women. He could only have daughters. So Lady Jessica violated what the the Benny Gesserit said and had Paul, a boy, right? Which means he could be the Quizak Hatterak. He could be the the male who could do what the Benny Gesserit could do, which is see into the future and the past, right? Yeah. So because Lady Jessica violated that, that's where Chani is supposed to be a mirror image of her where Chani is also a concubine, not, not the empress, but Lady Jessica says at the end to Chani in the court, she says, they will know us in the future as wives because he in fact marries Chani and has children with her instead of Irulan who will never reproduce and never have a child. and never she know- can't? No, because Paul will never have sex with her. Oh, I mean... Pew Pew is not terrible. If you had a choice between Pew Pew and Zendaya. Oh, my God. No, I'd plow Zendaya six ways to Sunday. That's exactly what Paul said. Yeah. I would not plow Pew Pew. Like, if I had a choice to have both. And And Chani does struggle in the book with being a concubine versus being the empress. But she also understands that she does come to understand that Paul needs to marry Irulan but then Irulan is punished, and if you listen to the, if you if you read the rest of the books, you see how deeply that affects Irulan and how it affects Chani, which is is I hate to spoil, th- I, I don't want to spoil the future, but that's the problem is is now they're off course from the books, and we have no idea what's going to happen in the end. Wait, con- what is a concubine? Just like a sex slave? No, concubines like uh, like uh, someone who has your children for you. Like the Japanese would have concubines. They would marry in order to solidify political power, but then have concubines to have heirs. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the concubine would ultimately be responsible for having an heir, but they would marry someone and be like, look, I'm not going to ever have sex with you. You're just married to me. Well, that's what, that's what Hey Girl saying. It's concubine is not the same as wife. Uh, no, but that's what Paul's mom says is you will be known as wives in the future or we will be known as wives. But the, but the point becomes is, you know, Chani gets all upset because he's like, I'm going to marry Irulan. But they never have that part where he, he says, I'm never going to have a child with you. You're not important to me. I'm literally just marrying you to take the title of emperor which demeans Irulan and promotes Chani as important because she's going to have the heirs. And that never happens in the movie. In the, in the book, Lady Jessica says it's the same as being a wife because Irulan will have the responsibility of being a wife. It's the same. This is the way that they used to do it in like all of the, the kingdoms during, during the, um, Middle Ages, this is the way it worked. You had arranged marriages, 
but they would not necessarily bear heirs. And what was it? Henry VIII killed a bunch of his wives because they wouldn't have heirs for him. They had the wrong kids. <laughs> so, okay, I, I wanted to know why you wouldn't watch Dune 3. And it's not a matter of fact whether or not you agree with me. It's a matter of fact that you agree with Frank Herbert because I don't... I understand why Chani is upset. Whoa, I get that. Spoilers. We are talking about spoilers. Is that ha- for Dune 3? Is that spoilers? I'm not watching Dune 3 because Chani to go all the way and kill Lady Jessica. No, that's not what happens in 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 Dune 3. Lady, that's the mom, right? Lady Jessica? No. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to happen. That's that's uh, T- Timothée Chalamet's mom, right? I mean, that's not what happens in the books. I Like I said, I've read all the books, so if you want to question me about the books, I can tell you anything you want because I've read all of them numerous times. Um, There is no... The weird part is there is a conflict between Lady Jessica and the family of the Atreides, but it's not because of what you think. It's it's different. She's manipulative, but she's not manipulative for the reasons that you think. It has nothing to do with Shani. Shani is a dutiful wife, and Irulan literally ends up. Uh, I don't want to spoil like the book. Irulan is. Let's just say that she's so disturbed by the role that she's placed in that it forces her to do things that are worse than Lady Jessica does. Forcibly, you say. Forcibly. And that's the point is that what people don't understand from the movie is that Irulan is put in a position that she thinks she has some sort of power and she has zero power because she will never have an heir. She will never share a bed with Paul ever. She is literally just wife in name and title only and that's it. And that's and that's the point is the sacrifice is that Paul thinks he's sacrificing, but he's really not because as people don't really seem to understand in Dune 2, Paul is not the hero, and that's the problem, is Denis Villeneuve understands that Paul's not the hero, and he tries real hard in Dune to make you think he's not the hero, but that's the problem, is you're supposed to think he's the hero until you get to book four with the God Emperor. Yes. It's time to He's not armor. sticking to the book at all, though. He's so, uh, in fact, as a fan of the book, I do not know where he's going to go in, uh, in, 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 in Dune Messiah. I, it's so far from the book, I don't know what's going to happen. As long as there's force involved, I'm fine with it. All of it force. He will probably have to force his way back onto Chani, but... I'd force my because way back the on books Chani. like literally it won't make any sense. And Denis Villeneuve said he uh, he already has the screenplay for Dune Messiah done, but he said that's the last one he wants to do because it's taken too much of his life. And the interesting part is once you get to Children of Dune, you could recast everybody and have a completely different movie, and still more force. Except there's one human being who needs to be in it. There's one person who needs to continue to be. Who's that? I can't give that. That's a huge spoiler. Oh, my God. Give it away. So he can't stick to the book. Honestly, as someone who is a giant fan of the book, I am confused as to where he's going. I can project. That's where everybody keeps saying, like, oh, Dune 3 is going to be this this big, like, love story. More worms. That's not the way it worked in the book. He's so far from the book, it is unclear as to where he's going because – In the book, there's like a 12, I think it's a 12 year different, like the the time jump is 12 years and and, uh, Timothy Chalamet, by the time they film it, it's not going to look 12 years different. Can you give him a beard? Can he grow a beard? I don't know if he can. I don't think he can. I think I like Timothy Chalamet in this movie more than I like him out of it. I like him in this movie. I thought, as someone who thinks that Timothy Chalamet is kind of a twink, he had some balls in this movie. When he gives that, he's yelling at all the Fremen and challenging them, and his voice register goes down a couple levels. Yeah, no, he's... I he, was like, oh my he's God. He's got a good he's angry got voice. Balls. He's got a good angry voice. I'll give him that. Uh, when he drinks, th- that's the problem. See, here's, here's the one thing that people may not know. So, hey girl, you're saying that Paul changed as soon as he drank the water of life and became a full-on lunatic... The problem is, is Paul does not 
commit to the golden path. He sees the future and he knows what's happening, but he's too much of a coward to commit to it. So he forces his children to commit to the golden path. And the problem with Dune is, is that you think Paul is the hero, but he's really not because he's too much of a coward to commit to the ultimate um, objective objective of keeping humanity from extinction. And that's all that matters is keeping all of this stuff with Dune is so irrelevant because all that matters is keeping humanity from being becoming extinct. And Dune doesn't quite get there. So you basically need to make more love So babies. she likes Chani's turn because it represents the Fremen who were just used as tools. In the books, that's not an issue because Chani is in fact not the daughter. The problem is, is they've race swapped and gender swapped her, her parents in the, in the movie. So if you're only familiar with the movie, movie, that's the problem. So you remember the black chick who was the, who was the, uh, the woman of change who's supposed to help the Atreides change from the, the Atreides to the Harkonnens who gets killed. Yeah. She's supposed to be Chani's father. So Chani's father is not full Fremen. He is an outworlder who works for the emperor and her mother is a Fremen. So that changes the concept of who Chani is. Chani is not full Fremen to begin with. So that's the problem is you're taking this character and you've totally changed who she is. She's not a native born Fremen. So it doesn't really matter whether or not she thinks the Fremen are used as tools because ultimately Paul fulfills the prophecy of being a messiah, but he's a false messiah. And he's Frank Herbert's ultimate goal was to prove that do not believe in charismatic leaders because they cannot be trusted. But Timothée Chalamet is too delicious not to be trusted. Apparently. And now we've gone... So far into Dune, yes, it's it's beyond, and that's the difference. Is that's why I'm okay. I'm okay with the movie. I enjoyed the movie. I would give it an eight out of ten. It's a great movie. Yeah, I enjoyed. I it. enjoyed it. I think it's an eight out of ten. It's not a ten out of ten because they far they they, they wanted to insert this like weird Shani uh, Zendaya girl boss thing where she's like a super awesome fighter and like. There's she's whole, the bestest. There's a whole part where she loses one of her children and they don't they don't care about that. They don't care about her being pregnant. They don't care she about her. She doesn't even have a child. kid in this movie. That's the point is they don't understand any of that. And and she, yes, Chani rebels against Lady Jessica, push the whole story into motion. That's not the way it goes in the book and that's the problem. My my problem with it is they insert like woke politics because Chani should not be shooting rocket blasters and killing lots of, you know, Sardaukar men because Sard- the Sardaukar, it's a prison colony of men. There are no women on Sar- on the, uh, on the thing. Timothy Chalamet is dreamy. He is pretty dreamy. I mean, I went from thinking that he was a little tiny wuss boy to being like, well, this man has some bars. The man's got delicious hair and he is good in this movie and he's got a deep voice. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it's a great movie. I don't think it's a 95. I would give it like an 89 to 91, somewhere in that ball. It's a low 90s movie. 10 out of 10. It's a low 90s movie. Yeah, it's not as good as you think, but it's still very good. And I enjoyed it and I hope we get more of it. So that's it. That, yeah. Do we gotta, do a good job? I hope we did. I got to unleash my sandworm in the toilet soon. So <laughs> if we keep any longer, there's going to be, a, there's going to be a popcorn tin. that's going to be filled with, filled with a lot oh more than God, popcorn. extra butter. Oh my God. Thank you for everybody. Thank you. Nasty Manny for joining. He is now going to be a co-host. I, hey, if he can, uh, I, I mean, I, I feel like I have a dump button, but. Can I mute him? I, I'm, I'm sure I can mute him. No, you can't mute that much racism. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe there'll be an audition. Uh, last question. What do you think about Lady Jessica? Do you think she was a good one or is she evil? She's a hoe. 
The problem is I don't really like her depiction in I didn't like her in Dune 1 and I don't necessarily like her in Dune 2. I know that she's manipulative, but she's much more sympathetic in the book than she is in the book. Gurney thinks she's a traitor and that she betrayed House Atreides and Gurney wants to kill her. So there's an interesting dynamic between Josh Brolin and Lady Jessica because he wants to kill her in the entire movie because he thinks she's the one who betrayed them to the Harkonnens. She's a whore. Uh, well, she's also a Harkonnen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's very interesting because she keeps having to prove herself to Gurney to make sure that she's not a traitor because they know there was a traitor and nobody knows that it was the doctor. Dr. Yoon, the guy oh, with the diamond yeah, on his head. Right, yeah. Nobody knows that it was Dr. Yoon that who betrayed them because if you have the diamond on your head, you cannot betray anyone. So that's where uh, Lady Jessica is not treated well in the books. She is treated as a traitor and people are not, not really a big fan of it. Um, so that's why it's a little weird for me because – She's much more manipulative in this in in the book or in the movie than she is in the book. So it's it's a little weird. And that's the problem is they steer so far from the book. I have trouble discerning it. But I understand. Like I get the turn. I just don't think they developed it enough. Right. Um, oh, I also wanted to point out one quick thing. No country for old men. Sure. You have Josh Brolin. Yep. And Javier Bardem acting oh, yeah. together again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting. It was really great to see them together. And they even mentioned it. And there's a bunch of shorts about them being like, I haven't acted with you in 15 years, but it's great to see each other. Yeah, they're cool. I like them. They're I good, love both those good guys. Actors. They're amazing actors, both of them. I love both of them in this movie yeah. and in general. So I think that's all we got. So Hey Girl agrees with our score. It's a great movie. It's a it's a very good movie. It's just a little shy of being great. But I still think it's worth seeing, and I think you'll enjoy it. And I also think that we uh, should praise it because it's a it's it's great to see amazing cinematography and something that it most does people look pretty. thought it was unfilmable turned the unfilmable book was turned filmable. No, the unfilmable book is two books from now. Yes, that is the true challenge. Will it be? F- They're not doing that. I don't know. It depends on how much the next move next movie makes. 